At a time when we've seen Hollywood looking for new creative ideas, things to adapt, there has been a big interest in adapting video games. Yes, and uh, these last couple of years, we've seen some big video game IPs get some show adaptations, movie adaptations, but have they all been good? Not really. It's not been the most consistent, to be honest. Uh, but we have seen, besides the majority of them being kind of a miss, there has been a few hits. Great examples, prime examples of video games adapted properly, such as The Last of Us live action series on HBO, the Castlevania animated series on Netflix, um, and even recently, the Fallout live action series on Amazon Prime. But what is it about those successful video game adaptations that is working? Hmm. I think it's because they're adapting the video game IP in a way that is catered for the fans. When you don't do that, you have something like this right now, where Paramount has officially announced the cancellation of the live action series of Halo. Now, they have brought in two seasons for this series and it has not garnered the viewership that they were expecting. But how is that how is that so? Halo is a big franchise. It's got a massive fan base, a hardcore fan base. I myself consider uh, myself to be a die-hard Halo fan. But why didn't that show work? Well, I think it has to do with the fact that the showrunners <laughs> the showrunners changed it, changed way too much from the source material, from what we are familiar with the games. It may look like Halo, it may feel like Halo, but something about it was extremely alienating. And it really comes down to, for me personally, when me and my friends watched that first episode of the premiere for, for the Halo series, and by the end of that episode, spoiler alert, uh, Master Chief removes his helmet and we actually get to see who's the person behind the mask. This is when I realized the showrunners don't understand Halo. They don't understand the video game series. And when you realize this, you as a fan completely uh, become indifferent to it. You just dismiss this live action series. And that's what kind of what happened. May, a majority of the fan base abandoned the show right from the get-go. And that first season lost the momentum to garner enough, uh, you know, positive reception for that first season. And now even the second season that came out earlier this year, no matter how good it got, no matter how much they try to now appease to the fans, it's too late. You have to, when you do something like this, you got to do it right the first time. You have to adapt something that's for the fans, that caters for them. I get that you want to transform it enough so that it becomes uh, more digestible and more approachable to casual viewers, newcomers, but at the expense of alienating the fan base, it's not worth it. And that is why Halo live action series failed. Now, that doesn't mean that the show is completely canceled because according to sources from The Hollywood Reporter, the showrunners, Xbox and 343 Industries are actively searching for a new platform to continue the series for a potential third season. But I'll be honest, <laughs> it's not gonna happen. I don't think so. It's, you know what's worse than hate or love? It's indifference. When you have an entire fan base become indifferent to your product, that's it. It's, it's game over. <laughs> you might as well make an entire new show from scratch. And I know that live action series was extremely expensive to develop and produce from the get-go, but they should have they should have done a better job with who were the showrunners that were involved in the production of the series because they clearly wanted to change things about uh, that are familiar about the, the franchise because they they wanted to give it more nuance. They, they had certain ideas of their own, but it clashed with what was always known about Halo. When I look at Master Chief, Master Chief, the whole point of that character, that silent protagonist, if you will, is he is a character that we as a fan, we live through him. We see ourselves through him. 
he is our power fantasy. When you took off the helmet, you removed everything about that. You, you, all the mystery, all, all that just, you know, uh, that kind of imagination that people have had about this character has dissipated. And that is what really is um, wrong with uh, adapting video game IPs, at least the most recent ones out there. The ones that are flopping, the ones that are not doing very well, those are the ones that honestly suffer the most. It's because you are creating something, right, that's not for the fans. That is where you are doing the worst thing possible. I understand you want to do a few things of your own, fine. But if you don't cater to the fans initially, you're not gonna you're not gonna get the viewership that you're hoping for, and it's a shame because the state of Halo, whether from the games or this recent adaptation, it's very uncertain. Halo used to be a cultural zeitgeist back in the day. It used to be an iconic franchise in the gaming industry and, and the gaming culture, and now it's just it just sits there. Every and it's like, oh, you remember Halo? Yeah, I remember Halo. Remember those days? Yeah, it was great. But it's always we're looking back. We're not looking forward for a franchise like this. Well, all I can say is that at least they tried. But they should have tried better. And to more other video game adaptations in the future, please take the lessons learned here and that you need to, if you're going to adapt a video game, please bring showrunners who are fans of that IP Create something for the fans, by the fans, or don't do it at all, honestly. And with that, guys, we're going to take a short break, and we'll be right back covering more news from the world of entertainment right here on The Evening Buzz. Stay tuned. If you liked this episode of The Evening Buzz, drop a like and subscribe. Be sure to follow us on Instagram for all our daily updates and top stories. 